thank you so much for joining us. This is just the start of an epic weekend of action here in Belgium for round six and seven of the World Rallycross Championship, a brand new era for World Rallycross in its new electric format. It's been providing us with a magnificent action so far this year. Johan Christofferson has four wins, but we had a new winner last time out in Portugal. Rallycross is absolutely fast and frenetic and it's provided us with awesome action across this year as drivers start to get used to these new electric vehicles that are driven so differently to what they've been used to for the last 20 years. Superpole is an opportunity for us to see every single driver on their own flat out around this spa Francorchamps circuit, which is quite different to what we've seen before. We'll go up to Hal and Nick to explain more. Well, many thanks, Ben, and we're all very excited about this Super Bowl. Each car goes out for one lap against the clock uh, to determine the lineups as we move forward throughout the day into the heats. If you're just joining us live here on RX Plus Live, this is round six, and we'll contest round seven tomorrow. So let's have a quick update on the championship standings after five rounds. And a 21-point lead for Johan Christofferson on his teammate Oli Christian Vaby with the Hanson brothers third third and fourth. Niklas Gronholm, the winner of the last round of the Tour, moves up into fifth position. Clara Anderson, Gustav Bergström and René Munich in eighth position. Now, Johan Christofsson was the winner here last year, but we have a very different track. We have worked incredibly hard with the Volvo construction equipment to make some changes to try and make it more engaging, more exciting. Hal, please tell us more. One of the shortest laps of the season, isn't it? Just over 30 seconds on a flying lap. And the changes, m the majority of the changes are in the final corner. Below the pink area, that's the joke lap section you have to take once in every race. We won't be using that in Super Bowl today. But you can see the, the brown area at the bottom of the screen there. That's the long left-hand corner before the jump over the finish line. And that's where there's much looser gravel this season. More difficult to find the traction and should provide more racing action through the course of the weekend. Yeah, and the track map has us down. There's that corners five and six, that long bend. It will be interesting to see how the lines are taken in the quest to record the fastest time in this Super Pole, which is a very important of part of the day to decide our lineups. Now on screen is René Munich, 45-year-old German driver, a team owner, a successful entrepreneur and very experienced with two sixth positions, his PB results of the season so far. Uh, René, who came to the party just a little late, didn't get as much testing pre-season as he had hoped for but there is no question of a doubt that Munich Motorsport are learning all about this all-electric Seat Ibiza very quickly indeed as René improves with each and every race as the season unfolds and it's green for go for René Munich all against the clock we will go into corner one which is a little bit loose then climb the uh, Redion past the Rouge up Redion and then the hairpin corner little nip of the handbrake normally you can see the rear wheels locked there in the middle part of the corner a lot of uh, the other drivers getting the rotation done earlier into the turn. A bit of a lock-up on the left front for Munich, carrying all of that speed and weight. Look at the car lifting the nose as he goes into the final corner, gets more rotation done than we saw last year, comes back to the inside to drive towards the jump. Jumps beautifully over the line. A 37.8 sets the benchmark for the drivers still to come. Good clean drive from René Munich. 
And that's by far the quickest time that he's put on the clock so far today. And next... Next up, car triumph, is Gustav Bergström. Looking forward to drive out to this track because it looks awesome and see all the fans. Now, Gustav Bergström, rookie driver for the Christofferson Motorsport team, just 19 years of age. But this young rookie who showed us some lightning launches so far this season and some real raw speed is learning very, very quickly indeed. We've been impressed uh, with Bergström, who has a PB of fifth position. He's placed fifth twice. So I would say the target for Bergström here today is to uh, try and get into the top four. He's 41 points off the pace of Christofferson in the championship standings but like many of the rookie drivers absolutely delighted to be racing this world rx 1e car around the world famous spa francochamp track here in belgium today watch for the red lights and then it's green for go target time is 37 spot 802 the teenage Swedish driver. Good launch for the uh, Volkswagen machine off the line. Bergstrom has been brilliant off the line so far this year. Slippery there in turn one now as you rejoin the Formula One track down through Eau Rouge. He's not as quick as Rennie Munich through the first sector. Nice and tidy around the inside of the hairpin. And down the hill to this very difficult braking zone before the left-hander on the inside of the Joker section. Bergstrom gets the car rotated nice and early into the final corner. He's slower than Munich again, though, in the middle section and runs very wide there on the exit of the final turn. This isn't going to be quicker, I don't think, a 38-4. Yeah, we lose our timing graphic on screen. Apologies there, but we can confirm with the uh, Combox computer timing screen that it's a 38.434. And that is quite a surprise, 0.632 seconds off the pace of René Munich, who still leads for the all Inkle team. René still at the top of the table as we move on to our third driver, a lady that's coming off the back of a career high in the last round of the FIA World Rallycross Championship. Next up is Clara Anderson. Legendary track going up a rouge, quick corners and a big jump at the end. This track is super cool. So here is uh, Clara Anderson already setting uh, historical records by taking uh, her podium in the FIA World Rallycross Championship in Montrelegre uh, last month. The first ever woman uh, to podium in the history of the sport. That third position was something that she wasn't quite expecting. Many of you remember Johan Christofferson. We thought he'd won it. Ten second penalty from the stewards. A quick shift around. All of a sudden, the uh, construction uh, dealer team have two drivers on the podium. In the press conference before the start of proceedings this weekend, uh, Clara was very calm and cool about the whole situation and maintains her season's goal of learning, developing her skill set. Having to reposition the car in the grid here. Don't quite know why that would be, but they all have to be in exactly the same place. The launch is a critical part of these laps and it needs to be just like a race start. Take nothing away from Anderson. She's lying sixth in the championship standings. And of course, fourth in the season opener, third in the last round. This lady is going from strength to strength and she's starting to find some very impressive speed. So we're hearing that there's a bit of an issue with something technical on track and that is the cause for the delay, but I think they're ready to go. Watch for the lights, red and it's green for go. Clara Anderson looking to pick it up where she left off with a podium performance in Montalegre, Portugal. Neat and tidy launch there from uh, Clara Anderson, starting from slot four, just like Rennie Munich did. Of course, they can choose 
where they start on the grid for the session through a ruse. The track looks like it's visibly uh, cleaning a little bit. She's gone quicker than uh, either of the drivers so far in the first sector by some three tenths of a session. This is going to be a good run for Clara Anderson. What can she do in the middle sector? Gets the nose in. A bit of oversteer on the exit of that corner. She's gone quicker than Rennie Mooney again by a tenth in the middle sector. Late turn in there to the final corner, but brings it back nicely to tighten up over the jump to the finish line. And Clara Anderson goes top of the table. It's an impressive time. 37.301. Anderson is top of the table. Rene Munich is now second. Gustav Bergstrom is in third position. Now, she raced here last year as part of the RX2 E Series. She's in the deep end this year, and that is a great way to kickstart Clara Anderson and her personal weekend here in Spa, Belgium. I'm impressed with that, Hal. Very impressed indeed. And next up, also in the PWR and for the construction equipment dealer team, is Niklas Gronholm. Can't wait to race here in Spa, going through a rouge, coming down the hill, um, onto the nice gravel section in the end with a big jump, all those sort of actions, so can't wait. Well, Nicholas Gronholm was surprised as we were when he was awarded the win, when Christofferson picked up the 10 second penalty for his move on the flying fin in that finale back in Portugal a couple of weeks ago. It was his seventh win of his career. He's looking for a pure win, and it may well come here in Spa, Belgium. A driver you can never write off. One of the most exciting drivers and teams to watch. Uh, Gronholm is now looking for his second win of the season, and this time he wants to win it all on his own. Red lights, then green for the launch. Now, Gronholm, just 26 years of age. Once again, could be the surprise package here as the construction equipment dealer team all of a sudden start to find their momentum as we pick up the season of the halfway point. Construction equipment dealer team, 49 points off the current championship team leaders, Christofferson Motorsport. This is their lead driver and they're expecting another big performance from the Finn this weekend. He's just lining it up on the grid. Chasing his teammate, Clara Anderson. No team rules, of course, in this Super Bowl. 37.301 is the target time for Gronholm to better. Here's the countdown. Based on experience alone, we would expect Nicholas Gronholm to uh, go quickest here, but it's not as clear-cut as that, is it? A bit of understeer through the first corner. The sun's come out now, so the track will uh, not dry immediately, but that will help the track dry for later on today. The rear wheels lock as he grabs the handbrake into the hairpin, nice and tidy through the first sector. Tied with Clara Anderson on temps, but quicker on hundreds and thousands for Nicholas Gronholm. Riding on board of him out of the tight right-hander into the final corner. It's such a short lap here. He hasn't gone as quick as Clara Anderson in the middle sector. This is going to be a critical final corner. And he goes through the chequered flag and he just... Oh, just about there. 37.061, uh, Clara Anderson's lead at the top of the table is uh, short but sweet. She won't mind uh, handing top spot to her teammate and, of course, mentor Niklas Gronholm, who lowers the time to 37.061 seconds. That's the confidence boost that Gronholm wanted, but he won't be too happy with that uh, second interval time. Next up, the first of the Hansen brothers, the younger of the two, it's Kevin Hansen. The spot track here is fantastic. It's such an atmosphere around with the grandstands atmospheric the track, and you can see all of the action and a fantastic joker lap as well. Well, Kevin Hansen in the Peugeot 208 has had some fantastic pace this season. There is no question of a doubt. He's taken uh, two runner-up positions to Johan Christofferson in the double header in Latvia uh, back in September. But one or two of the opinion leaders on the uh, World Rallycross scene think that Kevin Hansen should have actually won a couple of races at this to this point in the season, not just holding on to podium positions. A lot of people believe it's the turn of the Hansen brothers to make their market. 
it may well come here in Spa, Belgium. But if it can all fall right for Kevin Hansen, there is no question he has the pace and he certainly has the skill to deny the hot pre-race favourite Johan Christoffersen here in Belgium today. Red then green for go for Kevin Hansen, the 24-year-old Swedish driver. There's time to be found in the final sector of this lap. We've seen the times very different through the first uh, runners we've had so far. Hansen sideways out of the first corner, gets understeer on the exit, riding above the Peugeot 208 on the brakes, long into the corner, nice and tidy around the apex. Now he's going to hang left to get as much width into the track as he can. Look at the dry line now through the right-hander. I think every single time these cars go around now, they're that little bit quicker. Kevin Hansen not as quick as Anderson or Gronholm in the middle part of the lap, but matches them in the first sector. This is going to be interesting. And it's a 36.893. First driver to go sub-37 seconds. Kevin Hansen goes to the top of the table. An electrifying third sector time from Kevin Hansen to go top of the table. He goes in to the leader's enclosure and really finding some superb speed and pace right at the end of the challenge. And from Kevin Hansen, we move on to his older brother, Timmy Hansen, who, of course, is the 2019 FIA World Rallycross champion. Spa is a legendary racetrack. Getting those lines right in the final corner with the gravel on the inside uh, is not easy, but uh, we've got one shot to do it, and this is it. Again, uh, Timmy Hansen believes that he still has the pace and he has the patience with this all-electric Peugeot 208 to record his first win of the season. He too, like his younger brother, has come close with three podiums from five races, uh, second, third and third. And so, surely, it's only a matter of time before Timmy Hansen climbs to the top of that podium. His younger brother, Kevin, sets the target time for Timmy at 36.893 seconds. He came so close to victories in the doubleheader in Portugal. Can Timmy Hansen make it work in spa Francorchamps here today? Kevin looking for the best possible view of his older brother in action here. We're ready with red lights, it's green for go. You can tell it's Timmy Hansen's Peugeot 208 by the white stripe on the front bumper. Keep an eye out for that over the course of the weekend. Not as much oversteer for Timmy on the exit of the first corner as Kevin had. The first sector time is... Not quite as quick, though, as Nicholas Granholm was riding on board with the Swede down the hill. This is where it's drying out. You can see the dry line. That's really going to help the braking into that turn. Not as quick, though, as Clara Anderson was in the middle part of the lap. So wide there through the final sector in the final corner. Is that going to work for him? Oh, very close. 36.723. And uh, Timmy Hansen takes the lead from brother Kevin, much to Kevin's frustration. But uh, two clear good sector times there, sector two and sector three were where it all came together after, by Timmy's standards, a relatively slow first sector and uh, launch to corners at one, two and three. But Timmy Hansen goes to the top of the table. Now, O.C. Vaby is absent, still having technical problems, which we saw earlier this morning in the free practice session, which means that Vaby will have to step out of this part of the day, the Super Bowl. We will move on to the man that everybody has has been amazed by this season. It, of course, is the defending champion and the winner here last year. Next up is Johan Christoffersen. It's a track which uh, you need to be very precise and exact. It's very short lap, only four corners. You need to be very, very precise, make no mistakes, and it's always ultra tight on times. Well, a wonderful, accurate description of this uh, World Rallycross track here in Spa in Belgium. Very little room for error. The racing line is key. And uh, it's almost like a short sprint 
There's our current leader, Timmy Hansen, sets that target time at 36.723 seconds, uh, 1.170, I should say, ahead of his younger brother, Hansen, with Gronholm third. But this is the man that has dominated the FIA World Rallycross Series so far this season. Four wins from five races. He'd won five out of five, only to be penalised by the stewards in our last round. Five in Montrelegre, Portugal. Look very impressive in the free practice this morning. This is definitely the man to beat. Can Christofferson win soon? Super Bowl. Just over 30 seconds until we find that out. Three different drivers have set the best times in each of the sectors so far. Can Christofferson be the only person to take a clean sweep as he drives through Eau Rouge for the first time? And no, he's not as quick as Nicholas Gronholm was through that opening part of the lap, down the hill, through the sunlight, on that dry line that's dried with almost every car here in this session quickest of everyone in the middle sector gets the polo lovely rotation for Christofsson gets a not perfect exit but he drives to the jump it's enough, 36.301 and he's done it again Johan Christofferson in the Volkswagen RX1E has got the better of the two Peugeots of Timmy and Kevin Hansen who finished second and third. I have to say the time difference is impressive on sh such a short track. He's at 0 0.422 of a second quicker than Timmy Hansen and over half a second quicker than Kevin Hansen. That's something that the team will enjoy from a statistical perspective because once again, Johan Christofferson has got some fantastic speed. Let's go down to Ben and here, uh, Johannes Christofferson on that scintillating Super Bowl performance. Ben, down to you. Johan just jumping out the car. Congratulations, fastest once again through Super Bowl. Just how challenging was it to find the limit on a circuit that's developing so much this morning? Yeah, it was it was tricky. Uh, I also think that uh, it was a little bit of an advantage to be later on as the sun comes out. So uh, for sure, that was that was uh, yeah uh, helpful to be last out. Um, I was a little bit cautious in the first corner just to, to read the grip level a little bit. And uh, yeah, the, the concrete ball comes quickly there if you're a little bit too brave. So, But from there on, the lap was very, very good. Is the position for the first uh, heat clear for you? What are you choosing? Uh, it's not clear. It's, it's clear what I'm going to choose, but it's not clear how it's going to end up. Okay. But, because uh, yeah, the, the start line here is, is very tricky and you, you can do a good start from the outside. And uh, yeah, we've seen the Hansers have a good start. So let's see, but I'm going to go for heat uh, two and pole position. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Johan. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Johan Christofferson taking uh, full advantage of his choice. He's going in heat two pole position. Let's just confirm those super pole results. Top of the table once again, Johan Christofferson. Comfortably clear of Timmy Hansen and Kevin Hansen. Gronholm, Clara Anderson fifth, then Rene Munich, Gustav Bergström. Let's hope that O.C. Vaby's technical problems can be put behind him sooner rather than later. That brings us to the end of the super pole session. We take a break back live on RX Plus Live at midday. Until then, on behalf of all of the team, many thanks for your company. It's goodbye for now. The FIA World Rallycross app enables you, the fans, to watch RX Plus anytime and anywhere as we enter a new electric era for the sport. Registered RX subscribers can sign in with their account details and watch hundreds of hours of exclusive World RX action live or on demand in amazing HD quality. With simple navigation, users can catch up with all the latest news, follow the race results, check the championship standings and enjoy free video clips.